Hello and welcome back everyone to another episode of SpinCast. Today I'm joined by a few individuals from Alliance Smith Tech High School, um, other coach and two of the Valorant players um, as they kickstart their season um, for this fall semester. So I'll turn it over quickly to them. Uh, my first question for all three of you, let's just go in a round circle, um, is describe uh, what your role is, kind of what you play in, what your game is, um, and then your role inside that game. Um, slash the coach, um, and then also kind of how you got started, the quick 30 second of how you got started in the high school esports. Um, and we'll go, le- yep, that's perfect. And then we'll go left to right from there. All right. Um, I'm Jason. I play Valorant. Uh, I'm the IGL, the captain for the Valorant team. And my main role is duelist. Um, the, the way I got started with it is I was always into video games, and Valorant caught my eye, and I just got decent at the game and played well as my role. Perfect, awesome, great to hear. Uh, Coach, you wanna go next? Yeah, sure. Uh, so my name is Austin Kohlberg. I'm one of the assistant principals here at Smith Tech. I also run the eSports uh, teams here. Um, I've been playing uh, FPS for many, many years. Started playing before it was Counter-Strike 1.6. Um, and so I still play competitively um, in CSGO. I founded the program here with uh, esports because I know that um, competitive esports can be a really valuable um, means to improving, you know, team play and camaraderie here at our high school. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Eric? Uh, so I'm a senior here at Smith Tech, and I've been playing games since I was around four years old, and I believe I picked up Valorant around when it started, although I wasn't too enthusiastic about it at the time. But I play a sub uh, position for both Valorant and Apex Legends here at the school. That's pretty much it. Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks for the quick introduction to everybody as the um, our college base tries to get to know y'all a little bit better. Um, my next question is a little more broadly for the year. Um, really kind of what's your, as an individual, what's your main goal for this year, uh, for your senior year slash season um, as you just started with uh, UFEA just a few weeks ago, and we'll go the same order again. Uh, my goal for this year is my last year, so I will hope to win a championship, and I will hope to end off strong with my grades and walk across the stage. Awesome, awesome. Those are very important uh, goals to have. What about you, Coach? Um, you know, we were the division champs um, last season, and so we want to win another division championship. And so uh, besides that accolade, I think we also want to really fortify the work that we're doing um, to build an esports program here at Smith Tech. And so having years of esports to come is really important to me. Yeah, absolutely. Future generations definitely want to play as well. What about you, Eric? Uh, I think my goal this year is mainly to just uh, bring home like at least a top position for both Apex Legends and Valorant. And I kind of would like to build a name just for this esports program, like here at Smith Tech. And I'm also hoping to just get accepted into like a top university, like UCLA or Berkeley or something. Yeah, yeah, that sounds very exciting as we look to the next one, which is a great segue into my next question, specifically for the two players here. Um, is what's that? What's your goal for the next step in your life as you graduate high school? Kind of perfect world. What do you want to look at when it comes to uh, that next step, whether it's collegiate or going to the workforce, et cetera? And we'll do the same order again. Uh, we'll just skip coach um, and go start with Jason. If it's a perfect world, I would like to go to, you know, college, go to a top college. Hopefully I get accepted and just be happy in life and have many years in life. Just be happy in life. I love it. I love it. What about you, Eric? Uh, I'm really just looking forward to like, I really want to get accepted into like UCLA, stay close to home, but I do want to go like a dorm there or at least get an apartment around there move out of home and start an independent life and i honestly just hope to get like an internship or something so i can get acquainted with the real world yeah absolutely that's a very important step in life i remember when i was freshman in college it's uh definitely a little scary sometimes a little daunting but totally worth it to be able to have your own space and everything that comes along with it um so my next question for everybody and we'll go kind of around the room everybody again is looking outside the game. So one of the questions that always comes up in the recruiting process 
um, collegiately is, hey, what's what's one of your outside the game skill sets? So not you know how fast you can flick and batter and or how well you can use your abil- um, your abilities and your your utilities. Um, but what's one of those skills that you have um, that's outside the game that you think separates yourself um, from the pack, so to say? And we'll start with you, Jason. One of my outside, you know, things to do, which like hobbies, um, I could say I'm pretty good at reading like books and my literature is okay. And also, um, I like going outside a lot. So I'm really like, I could say adventurous. Gotcha. Cool. Cool. What about you, coach? Um, I think I'm bringing a lot of organizational skills to the work that we're doing here at Smith Tech. Um, as also the assistant principal, um, you know, we have to balance the needs of our kiddos, our students wanting to be players, but also as, as you know, um, students first. And so it means making sure that they're at the top of their grades, they're applying to their colleges, since many of them are seniors, so that they can then focus on playing when they've got their priorities finished or, or worked on. Yeah, absolutely. Having that balance is very key for sure. All right, what about you, Eric? Uh, I think my skill that I like actually have outside of like Valor and everything is like just talking to people. Like I can talk to like any team member, uh, like any staff at school. Like whenever I need something, I'm able to just communicate with them. And I think I'm able to bring like people, I guess, not like down like in a negative way, but just like I'm able to bring people back to themselves, like back to reality. Yeah, exactly. Being able to like level set within a team or a group is really important because I'm sure we've all been there um, having a rough match in Valorant or whatever game and everyone's a little tilted, <laughs> a little bit on edge and being able to bring it back a level um, and kind of mentally reset is usually the only way to win at that point. So super, super important skill. Um, kind of a general question, everybody. The one I'm just curious to hear everyone's responses from is when we look at esports as a whole, right? So everything, anything from A to Z, your, your mind can go anywhere with this. Um, what's one thing you would change about esports? Like I said, it can be anything and everything. Um, usually it's a little, something a little more relevant to you, but what's one thing about esports that you'd be like, mm, I really wish it, you know, this was X, Y, Z way instead of the way it is now. Jason, I'll let you go first again. You always get no time to think. <laughs> um, one thing that I would like to change about esports is how people view it. I feel like a lot of people view esports as people playing games and sitting down and like not really having like to do something which that view is kind of like stereotypical and i feel like we should change that way because it could bring people together and really help out like a lot of students yeah absolutely one of the things that i've i've noticed um a lot from this and and, um austin mentioned this earlier was kind of the way that teamwork and camaraderie goes together right there's you know a ton of um, esports competitors or gamers that you know we might not want to play football, baseball, basketball, or some other team-driven things, but we want to play on a team in esports. Um, and being able to provide that um, is really, really important. And I, I hate the way that you know, there's a lot of um, people out there that just shun it and say, no, 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 we're not going to do that. And it's like, well, a lot of people want to do it. Let's let's give them a good constructive environment to be able to pursue that stuff. So um, love that response. Uh, what about you, Coach? Um, I think it's not understanding how much dedication and practice it takes to be a good competitor. Um, We're not just talking about the hours and like hundreds if not thousands of hours in game, but realistically, it's how much practice you have to put into your own mental game to be prepared to be an actual competitor and to win the championship. Um, And it takes a lot more of that mental fortitude um, than just sitting down and going into a match and then playing. Yeah, absolutely. What I always say is that I think people like look at a player like Tom Brady in the NFL as super, super smart, super intelligent. Everyone knows how much film he watches and how much study of the game he does. It's no different in any other esport, right? It's the same level. If you're not at that level and trying to win a championship, you probably won't win that championship for sure. So totally, totally, 100% love that. What about you, Eric? Uh, I think I kind of agree with Jason, like how deeply people view or think about like esports. Like they'll look at any other sport and be like, oh, like so much harder. Like it takes like so much physical skill. But then they don't think about like any of the mental skill that goes into esports, like actually preparing yourself mentally, not letting yourself like 
uh, get super mad at something or actually thinking about like quick decisions that you have to make in game, like positioning and stuff. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The game, all, all these games um, at a competitive level, there's so much depth and breadth that makes them endlessly complex. Um, all right, so I got kind of one more question for everybody and then more, one more request at the end. Um, but one more question uh, for everybody is, tell me kind of a quick story. You know, we just talked about how we want society and a lot of people out there that look at video games a certain way. Um, we want them to look at, it, look at it in a better light, right? So tell me one of those, you know, stories that has impacted your life um, or that you've experienced that really sheds light that kind of says, hey, you know, this is why esports should be, um, you know, looked at the same way as football, baseball, basketball, or other traditional sports. Um, just a quick 30, 60 second version of what that one story that impacted your life um, is. And same order again, Jason, you're up. Uh, well, I can say my story was when I was a little kid and I first started playing games, my father didn't really like like it like he didn't really like me playing games and like not going outside and just like staying at home well when i grew up and like got into like a uh, better mindset when i was a little kid i started noticing that like when i'm playing these games it helps me bring out myself helps me calm down my temper and just makes me feel relaxed and that's why i basically fell in love with video games yeah absolutely absolutely i love to hear that all right what about you coach um I think a fond memory of mine is just watching, uh, you know, Jason and the boys uh, win their championship last season. Um, it really was inspiring to see um, kids who maybe weren't necessarily friends at the beginning of the season, um, and they had some, um, you know, teamwork issues to work through, um, actually come together after many weeks of practice, um, lots of team discussions, um, you know, and some reality checks uh, to come together. Um, and each week through playoffs, I just saw them become even more hyped um, until, you know, the day of the match, they were like sitting uh, in class and they're talking about their strats. They're looking at film. They're checking out the Twitch stream from the other team. And they're just like, they're hyped um, 100% of the way um, to, get, to get that W. So it was like really inspiring to me to see that happen. Yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a special moment to say the least. That that's incredible. What about you, Eric? What's one of those moments for you? Uh, I think one of the fondest like memories in video games in general for me is probably I believe I started playing games when I was like five years old, and I started playing with my brother. The first game I ever played was Call of Duty, and so it's just it was my way of getting closer to him. It's obviously he's a couple years older than me. There's not much we can bond over. It's not the same generation, but this was the one thing that I could actually like connect us and i think it really just like fueled my passion for video games and i still play with him to this day yeah absolutely that's uh, another great story i'd love to hear all of that all right so we're running up a, at the end of time here but i have one request left not really a question um uh, but i know that you guys probably have a rivalry right or that one team that you really want to beat uh, like you won the championship last year so maybe it was a team that uh maybe just nearly missed beating you but uh, what's one word that you have? Clean, clean, nothing bad. <laughs> uh, but what's one word that you have kind of equipped um, at that particular, A, who that team is, and B, what do you have to say to them? As I'm sure you're going to face up against them once you end the playoffs later this fall. Um, you and get Jason. Okay. I'm not quite sure the team that it was, but it was a player in that team. And, you know, you hear my feelings in the, in the the um, comments, and I just want to say, you know, I have my feelings, and you know, we still want to be uh, GG, and I'm better. <laughs> there you go, there you go. You gotta, if you're gonna talk to talk, you gotta be able to walk the walk as well. So love to see that. What about you, Coach? Um, I bet I, it reminds me of that same game. I remember I was texting that, um, and so our, our our players did a good job of staying uh, very, uh, you know, being well mannered. Um, but um, knowing that we crushed them um, and they got nothing on us just felt even better. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Being able to walk the walk, like I said, is uh, that's that's a very nice feeling after the fact. What about you, Eric? Uh, last season, I didn't actually get to play that many games just because I was a sub too. But I do remember that it's like a lot of the games or the games that I did play, a lot of like the pre-game comments would be pretty fun just. In general, in general, I really enjoyed 
just talking to the other team a little bit before. Awesome. Awesome. Sweet. Love to hear all that. Well, everybody, thanks so much for taking the time to sit in on an episode of Spencast with me. For all the colleges out there listening to this recorded um, podcast, you know, definitely reach out. Um, we'll make sure that all the information to reach out is uh, easily accessible, especially with those player profile links um, and everything from A to Z there. So thank you all once again for joining me on this episode of Spencast. And to everyone out there listening, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, we we will pause there. Um, I'll cut all this bit out. Thank you guys so much for taking the time. I know we went part just a little bit over that 15 minute mark, but I think those your guys' responses to the questions were super awesome. Um, other than that, I don't have too much for the. I think one of you said that you have to finish your profile. Just make sure you finish your profile on, on our website because um, that's the easiest way for colleges because they can message it, they can see all the information right there. Um, it just makes that connection process super easy. Um, just and this is more for you coach but what we've started to do this season is we're connecting the college coaches directly to you as well as the high school coach um because you can answer a lot of those kind of get questions that you know we'll never be able to know yep. you know we can't keep up with thousands and thousands of people um so be on the lookout for that i'll connect you out of your email um and then that way um for you with the players as well um can kind of come together and have those conversations and see where it goes um one last bit of advice is as colleges connect with y'all Always respond, never blow a coach off for any reason. Even if you know it's a school that you don't want to go to and you're like, no, thank you. You know, that might have been the East Coast or um, that's just not a school you're interested in. Always say thanks, you know, uh, for the connection and thanks for reaching out. But, um, you know, I, I'm good at this point. Um, just let them know because you never know what might come up after the fact. It's always good to at least say that. Um, I always say that because we do get some people that just get blown off. <laughs> um, so make sure you always at least respond. Um, other than that, any questions for me or anything I can be a help with or ready for the match tonight? We're going to get some practice in. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Well, Y'all have, have a great day. Have a great night. Good luck in your match tonight. Thank you. Thank Take you. Care.